My great pleasure and honor uh, to honest Pamela Reed with us. So as you know, my name is Shai Reshef. I'm the president and founder of University of the People, uh, the first nonprofit tuition-free accredited American online university. And today uh, I have the honor to host uh, Pamela Reed, a member of our president uh, council and a very distinguished scholar uh, for a discussion about herself as well as about higher education. So welcome, Pamela. Thank you so much, Kai. It's, it's an honor to be here talking with you. Great. So why don't you start by uh, telling, telling us uh, about your history and how you became involved with the higher education? Oh, well, I will have to make a long story a little bit shorter for, for us today. Um, I was born in New York City. My parents were born in New York City. Um, and they didn't have the opportunity to go to university, but growing up, my mom always said to me, when you go to university, not if. So I, I knew that was in my, uh, in my future plan, even as a young child. Uh, going to, to Howard University as a first generation student was exciting, uh, a little daunting. It was such a different university classes and experiences are so different from anything students experience in high school. Um, I'm not sure anyone is really fully prepared, but I didn't go to the university thinking I would become involved in higher ed. It's something that as I studied, I became a psychology major and it just seemed that one step in front of another led me to that path. And being a first generation student in a, how, in a, at Howard was definitely different than for other students. And since we have a lot of our students, 60% of our students are first generation students, can you tell us about your experience from that perspective? Well. You know, I learned so much from the older students, from my professors, and I can tell you a, a funny story. I went to Catholic um, parochial high school, actually straight from kindergarten through high school. And so it, the, it was a very different experience. In my very first day, in my very first class, I thought you had to stand up when the professor came in the room. <laughs> and I started to stand up and then I looked around quickly and saw no one else was standing up. So it was a different culture. <laughs> University, interestingly, I was uh, Howard University, as many people may know, is a predominantly African-American university founded back in the 1860s after the U.S. Civil War. And so that was a wonderful experience for me. Uh, when I was in high school, I went to an all girls high school. And so as I've evolved as a scholar and a researcher, I realized that being in an all girls school showed me that girls can do many things. Being in a, in a predominantly African-American university showed me that African-Americans can do many things. And so it led me to move away from believing in stereotypes, thinking that people are one way or another because of their background. I, I hope that many students when they go to university will start to realize that people are what they bring to the situation, are what they put into the situation. And you can get so much out of it or you can just stay the same. It's such a strong statement. And, you know, both about women and about black community, I think it's, it's extremely strong. And the, the way you phrase it is, is, is amazing. Then you went, well, later on to lead um, University of St. Joseph. Tell us how, how you got from Howard to <laughs> all the way oh to- Oh my it. goodness. It, it was amazing um, to, to be a president of a university was, a goal, again, not something I started out planning, but 
as I studied and became a researcher, I became uh, involved and decided to become a professor. And I was in a department and I saw where leadership was so essential and I became a head of department. And step by step, again, many times, you know, I know there are some people who when they're 10 years old know what they want to be. That was not the situation for me. I, I saw opportunities and happily I was prepared. I didn't have a lot of mentors along the way. I, but I looked at who was around me and learned at every situation, good and bad. You can learn what to do. And sometimes you learn what not to do. Um, if you step back and think about it and keep yourself and have your own standards of excellence, don't just rely on friends or peers or they said, he said, she said, what do you think? And little by little, as I developed my understanding of what I thought I needed to do, where I wanted to be, uh, I was able to, to take advantage of opportunities. And that's how I got to the University of St. Joseph, which was a college when I was there and I was able to transform it to a university. Wow. How many years did you spend there? I was there over seven years as a president. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. It was a and good time. It was, it's an amazing institution, but that's um, something that I found that every institution has some things the same and some things different. The culture, the people, that's what makes an, an opportunity. And when I saw after I retired, the University of People in its inception and the opportunities it was providing for people, I said, here's something I would love to be involved with and contribute to. Thank you, because that was, that was uh, my next question and uh, why uh, you decided to get involved with your people. And um... it's, you know, higher ed, as you know, and I'm sort of anticipating where you're going because I think higher ed especially this past year, but even before that, has been involved in a lot of change. The, the demographics, the student bodies have changed, but some other um, parts of higher ed have not changed. And now, especially after the pandemic or during the pandemic, we've seen a lot of traditional universities experimenting and moving towards new models. We have seen consolidation, mergers. We've seen partnerships. And, and that's one of the things that I have really applauded you, Shai, and the University of People for forging partnerships with other institutions across countries, across disciplines, because we need new models. We have to keep inventing and reinventing ways to help people get more education because these days it's so essential um, for, for I, families, for communities. So looking at higher education in general, where do you see it in, let's say five years? Oh, I, I wish I knew. I think- it, <laughs> Nobody knows, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. Then I could make a lot of money going around telling people what to do. <laughs> I think that people will continue to experiment. Um, the University of the People, in a way, is a brave new endeavor. Um, I don't wanna call it an experiment when it's so many tens of thousands of students are now part of it. But I want to say that it's showing us a new way. It's showing us another model. And it may not be for everyone, but then the traditional models didn't work for everyone either. So we need more than one model. And I think University of the People's model is going to work for a lot of people whose needs were not met by the other models. It doesn't mean we have to give up on the others, but it doesn't mean that there's going to only be one. I think we're going to have multiple ways of getting people 
the information, the resources that they need to, to grow. I, I, I can't agree more with you. I think that we are, we are paving the way to many students who cannot do it otherwise, mm -hmm. saying that it's not good for everyone. And we see where students come to us and many of them just find that what we do is not what they are expecting or what they can or cannot or, or, or want, want to do. And I think that the beauty of uh, higher education that it's open another option. And especially in the US, there are so many options for higher education, so many different colleges and pedagogies and people who study in different ways and serve different needs. And online is there now uh, to, to show another way. So if originally it was kind of an experiment and it was on the margin following the pandemic, we become, we become the mainstream because everyone is, is okay. now experiencing what we do. But in the years to come, we will be one of the models that will be there. And uh, our, our um, attempt or, or our mission to show the world that uh, online education can be accessible, affordable, with the right quality, will give opportunity to many more to come. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and you know, Shai, one of the things and one of the reasons that I'm always a proponent of higher education is as a developmental psychologist, I've seen the research when men and women are educated, they are healthier. They do better with their families and relationships. They do better for their children and for their communities. They are more of contributors. And so even though every model of higher education is not for every person, I think every person needs some higher education to continue to grow. We don't stop at 16 or 18. In fact, research is now showing our brains are only still developing into our 20s. And we know that we are still learning into our 30s and 40s and beyond because our lifespan is longer our communities need more expertise. Everything is becoming more complicated and we need higher education to help us understand what's going on and to help be a part of these changes, these transformations. So where, where would you want to see your people in five years? I would love to see everyone every young person in all of the different communities have an opportunity to reach their potential. I would like everyone to have options. That's, that's really what the higher ed gives people. It gives them an option and it opens up options. You know, as I said, I didn't start out to be a university president. I didn't start out to be a professor. I didn't even know what professors did until I went to a university. I'm not sure I still knew then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, sure, uh, I'm not sure that I know now, so. <laughs> well, that's another conversation. <laughs> but I, I would just say that there were subject matters and classes that I took that I had no idea existed when I was in high school. And, and that's the excite, that was the exciting part, to see that there were things that I didn't know anything about. And now I know a little bit about them, at least I know that they exist. And they give you new paths, new pathways to find out. Um, I think that, that so many communities, and especially for young women, it seems that the options are, are narrow. It seems that, you don't have choices, but I think we want to be able to say to people, you do have choices. There are many paths that you can take. Come in and take a look at a couple of them and see which one really will suit you. That's, that's amazing because you're getting into my, my last question, which is this very, very thing. Well, what advice would you give our uh, students and lifelong learners? Oh, I think don't 
foreclose on your future. That means don't decide when you're 16 that this is the only thing you can do. You can keep changing. You know, most people are, if we're fortunate, if we take care of ourselves, are going to live long, long lives. We have many, many years to work. So even if you start out with one path and that is not fulfilling, you can come back and be educated and start doing something different. Um, there are so many people who are, have been doing something for 30 years and then come back and decide they wanna do something else. I've had adult students in my classes. In fact, I have to tell you, my own mom, who did not have the opportunity to go to university, she was in a family of eight children and her mother died when she was very young. She didn't have the opportunity to go to the university. She became a secretary. She graduated from high school. After I had already finished my PhD, she went back to school and got an undergraduate degree. Wow. Online, I mean, it wasn't online at that time. Right. Nothing was online. So she had to go after working all day. She would go on the weekend and at night. She got her degree and moved up in her company. It was IBM and she became a manager. Wow. So that you never stop. You, you don't have to stop. You don't have to be stuck where you are. You can always find another path. That's so inspiring. Thank you so much. And uh, I think it was it was really inspiring call. And I hope that a lot, uh, a lot of people in general, but a lot of our students uh, will learn from your wisdom and uh, will will follow your your steps. So thank you so much. Thank you for talking with me. It's very exciting to be able to to give back. That's that's my goal. And you're doing a great job there. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for everything. Have a great weekend. Thank you. And if you like this, uh, this conversation, please like it and share it. So a lot of other people will enjoy it as well. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye.